Hello YouTube, my name's Marie, and as you can probably tell from the title of this video, today I'm going to be doing a review of the Talk To Me In Korean learning books. And I do know that they have a YouTube channel, a quite an active YouTube channel, but I don't personally watch a lot of their videos, so this is specifically going to be only on their book resources and, and also their audio files that they provide for you on Talk To Me In Korean. So first off, let's talk about the Talk To Me In Korean Level 1. Now this book I'd only recommend to you if you're serious about learning Korean because it's got a heavy focus on grammar. It, it doesn't give you a lot of vocabulary words, like if you want to just learn simple phrases or things like that, I would recommend the Korean phrase book or even just other YouTube videos. Like I'm sure you could just Google phrases for tourists in Korean or whatever and you'd get lots of great videos. I recommend Korean Ani. I just found her and I really love her videos. So if you just want like a surface knowledge, just go find some YouTube videos. But if you want a deeper understanding of how the Korean language works, this is what you want. So the first couple lessons are quite simple. I mean, if you're interested in learning Korean, you probably already know them. Like the first one is like how to say hello. And the second lesson is what is yes and no. And I'm sure you all already know those ones. But as soon as you get to probably, I would say, probably lesson seven, that's when I started to learn new things. And that's actually when I started to have troubles because lesson seven is this, that, and it. And I don't know what it was about the this, that, and it, but I had to reread that lesson three or four times before I understood it. And it actually got me frustrated and I took a break and I had to come back like a while later because I just wasn't understanding it. It just, I don't know if they weren't explaining it properly, but I think it was on me because when I rewrote it, sorry, when I reread it after I had taken a break, it did make sense. Along those lines, you should also buy the Korean workbooks because there were a couple other lessons that I had trouble with in the level one, like the textbook. But then as soon as you go into the workbook and you have to actually answer more in-depth questions that's where your true understanding comes from and i really recommend you buy them together if you're going to buy them buy them together don't cheap out like you're going to get a much better understanding and you're going to love yourself for it i actually have no complaints about the workbook i like the paper it's easy to write on it's easy to erase i just and i like the exercises too i found them extremely helpful and targeted you know you're not doing things repeatedly that's not going to help you there's repetition but it's going to help you but I do have some criticisms of this, specifically the audio tracks. So on the corner of the pages, focus. I don't know if that's focused or not. There's track 11, but then track 11 could be for several pages and I have to re-listen to the same track that could be, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds long, but I want to hear just specifically one part of it, that can get a little frustrating, but I don't really have a solution to fix that because as it is already, there's about like 52 tracks you have to download if you want them on your iPod or something, or if you don't have internet connection outside the house. Oh, and lastly for this book, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tip what really helped with my understanding. Kind of for every lesson, there's a section where it has a sample dialogue. And at first I just read the sa sample dialogue and then moved on. 
So what I suggest when you get to one of these sample dialogue sections is write all over this page. You know, I circled all the words that I understood and then I put what it was in English. With that, I wish that there was more space on these sample dialogue pages for that reason. I know they're not intended to be like an, an extra exercise, but that's what I used them for and I loved it. It helped me a lot. However, what it doesn't have is it doesn't have a deep explanation of Hangul. I went back and I bought this book. Do not buy this book. <laughs> I never use it. So the first couple pages, it'll show you how Hangul is written and the direction it's written and like the order in which you read the characters and I actually found that helpful. But this that bit is also in the workbook. So it's redundant, you don't need this extra book, don't buy it. <laughs> and then it has a brief history of Hangul, super interesting, but again if you're interested in that you can just google it. The first maybe 10 pages are useful. See they break down each like character in detail kind of the sounds it makes. And some of the pictures are also quite useful. Like they'll show you the, um, the mouth shapes that you need to make. But if you're like me, romanization does not help me. I read it wrong <laughs> and I end up having to write my own, how I think the word should sound or be written in English. So romanization is not for me. What I ended up having to do anyways is find other videos on YouTube where I could listen to each letter and each vowel sound and then write down pronounced as. And then at the end, at the back, all of this is, is handwriting, is different calligraphy and like understanding hang, Hangul and like a native person's writing. And that's not what I wanted. I really don't think you need this book. I wish I hadn't bought it. And it's so floppy. I know it's something silly to critique about a book, but it's so floppy. I don't I don't like how floppy it is. And lastly, I want to talk about the Korean phrase book for travelers. This thing is a freaking treasure trove. Anything you think you could possibly need if you're traveling Korea it's gonna be in here. However, this is not the book to teach you how to speak Hanguk Mao, which is a uh, Korean language, because it doesn't break down the sentences. It will write the sentence that you might need to know, like say you wanna ask like, oh, how do I get to Gangnam Station? It'll write that out in Korean and then underneath it'll have the romanization, but it won't, it doesn't break it down. It doesn't dissect the sentence and tell you, oh, this part of the sentence means this, and this part of the sentence means this. This book is not for understanding. This book is for, you're just traveling, you want a little bit of Korean to get by, or even just something to be like, oh, Iga, this is what I want, <laughs> you know, just, but I do think it's incredibly useful because the first half, is probably phrases. And then the later half of the book, it it's like a little miniature guidebook. And so I have I have the Lonely Planet uh, Korea. Them together, it's like a perfect pair. Because this goes through some of the festivals as well. And then specifically in Seoul, it has these subway lines. What? Like, what? I was not expecting that. It's got pages of subway lines. And also it has a brief description of the areas that are in Seoul for... I don't know how else to say it. If you're going to Korea and you want a phrase book, this is what you want because it gives you phrases and then it also gives you extra helpful things. So to summarize, if you're going to Korea, this is a must. 
if you want an in-depth understanding of the Korean language, these are great books. Highly recommend them. They're really good for the reading and writing aspect and learning the grammar. However, I, I do know that my pronunciation is going to be butchered because I have no one to practice off of and also no one to tell me like, oh, you're, you're saying that wrong. And lastly, this book, this Be Become a Hangul Master, you don't need it. Wasn't scripted, just rambling. I wanted to put out a video. This is what you got. This is what you're getting. Quality at my channel. All right, that's it for me. Have a good day, have a good night, bye.